woke up in the middle of the ocean with a poor man's pirate hook. I looked nothing like a pirate though, so I resolved to find the guy and return him his hook. But where was I? Who was I? I could only hope to find some answers in the trash around me. So I got to collecting. I grabbed everything my hook could reach. Leaves, planks, plastic, and most importantly barrels to hopefully drown myself in rum. A few moments later though, my arm was already sore from throwing the hook, so I took a break and checked my left pocket. I found a full book of crafting recipes that I had apparently conveniently prepared for the trip. MacGyver of the seas that I apparently am, I rigged myself a fishing rod from planks and ropes to catch me some food. You can't rid the world of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch on an empty stomach. Ah, what the? A vicious beast interrupted me, and I took the most sensible decision to fight it with the only weapon I had. My strategy worked and the shark left, but it left with a piece of my raft. And now that she had sampled my scrumptious raft, I knew she'd get hooked and come back for more. I knew I had to do something. I had grown quite fond of my raft, you see, and I wouldn't allow some shark to eat it. This is my house. I have to defend it. So I sharpened a piece of wood with um, ropes and prepared to defend my home. As I was waiting for the shark's return, I had another beast to worry about. My stomach was growling, so I remembered about the fishing rod I had made earlier and caught me some fish and a waving cat. I then made myself a plastic cup and also a grill to satisfy my basic needs. I had troubles placing the grill, so I returned to doing what I did best, fishing for trash. When the shark finally arrived, I pooped my pants. But I regrouped quickly and started stabbing it with my shiny new spear. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to stop the beast, and she took another piece of my raft. I was forced to reconsider my strategy and decided to befriend her instead. So I gave her a name, and after patching up and expanding my raft, and placing the grill and the water purifier, I decided I'll make her a welcome meal to die for. As I was fishing for ingredients, I found blueprints for antenna and receiver in the floating barrels. I now knew what I'd do next after I was done befriending Josefina. I also found some stones in the barrels which I used to make an anchor and beads that I promptly cooked. I saw some other raft in the distance and was secretly hoping I could meet the manager of this whole thing. But upon approach I noticed Josefina's distinctive bite mark and derelict state of the raft. It turned out to be abandoned, yet I did find some materials on it and a weird looking scarecrow. Hello Wilson. The raft sank once I left. Well, I did have a sinking feeling about it. Josefina came early. I did not have the main course ready yet, so she had to snack on my raft. I did not want to keep her waiting, so I scrambled to finish the dish. I then threw the anchor I had made before and invited her to the feast. Here, Josefina, here. She wasted little time. As she was enjoying the meal, I poked her in each eye for the two tiles that she had stolen from me and hit her a dozen more times, for good measure. My good friend Josefina unfortunately passed from the wounds. I looked into her eye to see if she had any remorse for what she had made me do. She did not, so I took her head and made it my head. Clearly, no one would mess with me ever again. I found that you can collect trash with your free hand while holding fishing rod, so I came up with the brilliant idea of building out my raft to the side, then casting the line and running back and forth to gather trash as I wait for fish to take bait. I'd pat myself on the back here, but my hands were busy. I took off the shark's head because it was limiting my ability to see. Now an island drifted into my view, but I had wasted my only anchor on holding a party for Josefina. Luckily, the island was all rock and no substance, so I didn't feel too stressed about it. What did stress me out though, was the shark clinging to my raft like some Sharknardo DiCaprio. I couldn't tell if it was the ghost of the one I had just grilled, or its hungry twin seeking payback. It took a while before I fished enough ropes for another anchor, but I made it just in time as land appeared in my sight. It was finally time to lay claim on my very own island. I drank some water and I ate some meat to prepare for my venture. Oi, Jolene, your sister thought she could take a bite out of my raft too. She's now my dinner. Swim along, you don't want to mess with me. That's right, it wasn't a ghost, it was the twin sister of Josefina and her name was Jolene. It was time to make the splash, but my legs became soggy noodles when I saw the distance I'd have to swim through shark infested waters. Besides, there was this ridiculously crucial trash that I couldn't miss. 
I did consider making a battle to avoid meeting Jolene's tutored embrace, but I spent my limited resources on a research table instead, because I was curious what sort of things I could research. But I was a terrible scientist. I had these blueprints, but I had no idea what to do with them. I was trying to feed them to the research table, but something kept telling me they had already been researched. But why weren't they in my crafting book then? Thankfully, Jolene came to attack me, so I happily forgot about the existence of this useless device. I reached into my other pocket and found a scrapbook. Your raft is your home, your hook is your friend. What? Who wrote this? Was it me? With what pen? And who's her? Oh, she's my sis, alright. The world is gone, but its stories remain. Gather as many as you can. Ah, uh, I'm not here for stories, ma'am. I'm trying to survive. Look, another abandoned raft in the distance. Oh, if only the owner had my scrapbook. As it was coming up, I resolved to overcome my fear of water, and I jumped straight in. Only a wimp would be hiding on my raft. YOLO! I got bitten, but trusted the gentle hands of time to bring me relief. I found some metal ore in the decoration package, neither of which made me too excited, so I rushed back to my raft before it left me. On my way back, I met Jolene face to face, and I could tell she was angry that I killed her twin. Look, it's just a misunderstanding. She didn't listen. <clears throat> Should have kept my shark head on, maybe I'd have passed for her twin sister. But in the end, I survived, and Jolene only took half of my health. I mean, really? I've seen mosquitoes with a better bite to kill ratio. A storage box was long overdue, as I had been dropping and leaving stuff for quite a while now, and it was the best place to preserve Josephina's head. By the end of the day, I noticed that my health had been restored. Time does heal all wounds, huh? To celebrate, I crafted a paddle. I also made a shark bait for Jolene to distract her from my poor swimming technique and a stone axe. Maybe there would be trees on the next island. On day 3, an island loomed into view, or rather, the cliff my raft seemed set on greeting. I panicked and dropped the anchor too soon. Thankfully, Jolene was too slow to notice me and I didn't have to deploy my secret weapon. With soil under my feet, I finally felt like a human being. And like a true human being, I immediately tried to destroy my surroundings. But I could not chop down the bamboo or the flowers. Bummer. I prepared neat little boxes for watermelons, and when they didn't fit, I just threw them out. I realized I didn't have any inventory space and had to go back to store my loot. I took a leap of faith to test out how far I could fall without dying. I must have been an Olympic MacDiver when I was a landlubber, because I survived. But it would take more than that to impress Jolie. I made a second storage box to store my goods and directed it to its place with some intense finger pointing. I dropped my stuff and went back to the island. I found a lonely tree on the island and I decided to end its misery. I chopped it down and made sure there were no traces of it left behind. I found boxes on the island. Weird. I found another tree and realized the mistake I had made. But now that I had killed its brother, I had to end this tree's misery too. I found a random crate, but it didn't fit into my inventory, so I left it behind. There was nothing else to do on the island, so I took another leap of faith. I spent the evening exploring my raft building options, because I tried to use up the stuff that was falling out of my pockets. Beneath the night's soft and whimsical gleam, I upgraded the raft like it was a grand dream. Wheelhouse sans wheel, an endeavor quite clever. Three nights without sleep, raft and I, forever. I also extended my raft and made it somewhat boat shaped. I didn't have any plastic to continue my masterful engineering, so I yeeted away my hammer in desperation, ate some shark meat and went to explore the seabed. I found some shiny objects, but was ruthlessly attacked by the shark. I didn't pay any attention to her, as I knew that's what she craved for. She eventually gave up and left me alone but I wasn't able to find anything interesting, so I went back on shore to vamy the plants I had missed before and pick up some white flowers along the way. I then returned to my raft to witness a part of it be destroyed by Jolene. So that's where she went, huh? I later used that hole to paddle away from the island. As I was sailing through the endless blue, 
I noticed a tall mountain that I felt compelled to visit. I nearly broke my paddle on the way there, but I reached it, and this time I anchored properly. But the size of the island made the old sea dog full tilt seasick. I got lost multiple times and was overwhelmed by the abundance of loot. True to my human nature, I gave the forestation a high five, stuffed all the odds and ends into my pockets, and generously scattered boxes around the island filled with the remnants of my greed. I did try to find my consumerist tendencies, but I couldn't pass up on all those beautiful blue, red, yellow, black and white flowers. I found a cool cave I really wanted to check out, but my loot filled pockets were cramping my style. So back to the raft I go, but all I see is my palm gently moving towards my face. That's because I went exploring the island with full pockets in the first place only because I didn't have any storage, and I didn't have any storage because I didn't have plastic. So what was I expecting? Jolene came back to attack my raft, and I seized the chance to gracefully glide to the nearest barrel, hoping to find some plastic. Alas, it was a barrel of laughs, but I got a pirate flag, which was nice. I noticed that the boxes of red beads that I had earlier left on the raft had now disappeared, which meant I was not meant to leave anything out in the open. My pockets were full like chipmunk's cheeks, but that wasn't gonna stop me from exploring the island. I mean, what else could I do as a hoarder? Red flowers or red berries? Hmm... I was attacked by some poop-flinging bird for taking its berries, uh, I think? It was painful, but I pressed on. The island turned out to be enormous. It was already dawn when I reached the summit of the mountain. I found a hut that was very inviting, unlike the damned bird. It turned out to be a shop in the middle of nowhere. Alright, so what does it sell? Needless to say, it was confusing, but I did make some sense of it after a while. I was supposed to buy fish bait and then fish with that bait to catch specific fish that the trader wanted. For that, it would award me reputation points and coins, which I needed in order to unlock higher tier items to use in my raft. How to get trash cubes for the bait, however, I had no idea, and it was time to get out since I was being relentlessly attacked by the bird. But hoarder that I am, I found at least two reasons not to get out. I stuck around to chop down a mango tree, and then I looted a crate which, well, led to my demise. I woke up in the middle of the ocean with the poor man's pirate hook. I had lost two thirds of my inventory, but well, at least I was alive, and I didn't have to manage my limited backpack space anymore. I was immediately attacked by Jolene because apparently my life was getting too sweet. I did not get the hint that the island wanted me dead, so I went back. I got nearly killed by a puffer fish, nearly drowned, I stumbled upon an angry hog, and more pooping birds that wanted me gone. But I did get back to the shop to collect that one hinge that I dropped. Totally worth it. I found more ladders on the other side of the shop and made a run for them. The ladders led me to more berries and mango trees, two satellite dishes and a crate, which, to be honest with you, wasn't very exciting. I hurriedly gobbled down some watermelons while frantically running around to escape a potential poop fall and then, as expected of such expert skiers as me, I rolled down the mountain. But my return to the raft was anything but smooth. Exhausted and starving, I was confronted by a hog. Too weak to run, I tried to chop down a tree for some coconuts. But my inventory was full and I knew I'd be dead before the tree gave in. So I bolted as fast as my legs could carry me, trying to escape the heartless monster that had no empathy for a fellow creature. Battered and bruised, I made it back to the raft. I found one silly beat, but no water to chase it with. I loaded up the purifier and hoped for the best, for I wasn't exactly in the best shape to do anything else. And I threw my hook in desperation. Finally, the purifier graced me with a sip of water, but the god of the ocean give it, and he take it away. I have a much worse day than you are! I wasted precious plastic on repairing my raft, because I, once again, forgot about my lack of plastic. I then dove into my depleting rations so gracefully once provided to me by the sea, drank some water, and went back once again to visit the cave that I saw before. 
damn it! There, I found some dirt that I needed a shovel for, and some mushrooms that I promptly collected. I also found some crates with stuff I didn't have any space for. You know, the usual. Still desperate for plastic for the storage box, I found some floating off the island. In a world littered with trash, I would never have guessed I would be craving plastic so much. I went back to remove the anchor and leave the damn island, determined to find a boatload of plastic before I ever set foot on another island again. But won't you look at that, it seems the island was sick of me too. Or maybe not. Can you let me go to hell the way I want to? Now that my rav got lodged in between two rocks, I needed a battle, which I left in the cave. And I needed plastic if I wanted a new one. Why? Why must life be so hard? Why must I fail in every attempt at masonry? Ah! Oh, at least I figured out how to use the research table. After dissecting all my items, I got plenty of new recipes, but I was scared to actually learn them, because I thought I would need a unique raw material for each. I should have paid attention, because when I learned the anchor, nothing else disappeared from the list. But there were more pressing issues. I was hungry, and I was running out of potatoes. I ran back to the cave to see if I could salvage my battle, but you already know how that went. Desperate, I threw myself into water, ready to entwine my fate with the sea. The shark was nowhere to be found though, so I was able to gather plastic to my heart's content. And this planted a thought in me. After saving countless turtles from floating plastic, I made it back safely to my raft, crafted a paddle, and got to work. But Jolene did not seem to be a fan of turtles, since all I wanted was to leave the damn island. I tried to ignore her at first, but the raft wouldn't move. I had no strength or will to do shark resistance training. At last, I escaped the cursed island. I kept gingerly researching things one by one. After spending all that time on the island, I noticed that my hook throwing muscle had shrunk immensely. But I was really feeling the love for my raft at the moment. I took the time to give it an upgrade, making it look like a proper boat. And you better believe I added a sturdy storage chest, so I wouldn't have any storage issues again. I made myself two collection nets because they'd obviously do a better job than me and soon started reaping the benefits. You go girl, that's right, show that wood who's boss. I made a crop plot and planted two watermelon seeds. Jolene, 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 please don't take it just because you can. On day 7 it finally dawned on me that I can research things and not lose any of the resources I had put in, and my crafting book became much thicker. My sharpness must have been at its peak that day, because it also struck me that watermelons needed water to, well, melon. As I strolled over to quench their thirst, I found seagulls going absolutely nuts over them. But I mustn't have been all that sharp after all, because I didn't whip up a scarecrow afterward. Instead, every time they came, I just charged at them, screaming. I was a great scarecrow, because my watermelons grew to completion and were delicious. Mmm. Mmm. Ten out of ten. Amazing. I figured that since I was a farmer and a scarecrow now, I needed a calendar. Every good farmer needs a calendar. Uh, day ten? How is it already day ten? And survived? <laughs> Had I though? I'm pretty sure I died back there on the island. Speaking of, I didn't have a chance to celebrate my second birth. Thankfully, there were these gifts in barrels that kept on coming, so I invited Jolene to my birthday party, and we had some quality bonding time together as I learned the blueprints of outhouse and trash can. But she didn't seem too impressed by those things, so I had to spend the rest of my birthday party alone. 
Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Many of the items I had researched earlier required copper, metal and seaweed, and I knew exactly where to get them. So when I found another island, I fooled the stupid shark by climbing one side and diving off the other to search for the rarest material of them all. But I found only clay, sand and some seaweed. The thing that I needed the most evaded me. I did find some crashed plane on the island though, with a pilot helmet and some manganana recipe. Ooh, fancy. I had a feeling that what I needed was hiding right under my raft. And I was right, there it was. Unfortunately, Jolene was a bit like a dog that had something and didn't want to give it away, even if she had no use for it. I was lugging around shark bait all this time including when I was having backpack problems on that big island. It was high time I finally used it, so I tossed the shark bait in the water and hid behind bamboo stalks. Haha, <laughs> stupid fish! Turned out that the stupid one was me, because the copper I had found under my raft was the only copper present on this island. I wasted a full shark bait for one additional copper and two metal ores, and nearly starved in the process. Get out of here, you greedy schmuck, you already ate today. Me though, I didn't have any food at all, but thankfully in this world, it's okay to eat raw fish, and all you lose is a tear of hydration. Now that I had some copper, it was time to make copper ingots, and to do that, I had to make a smelter, and to make a smelter, I needed bricks. To make a brick then, I needed to combine clay and sand, which I did. I then assigned it to deck duty, but quickly figured that one obedient brick would not cut it, because I needed one for researching the smelter and another one for actually building it. So I removed the anchor and set out, hoping for shores with more clay and more sand. It was already day 12 and I was feeling behind schedule. I wondered how long before scurvy sets in. Thankfully, I fished out a motivational quote from the water and my life instantly got better. After a whole day of fishing, scavenging and losing my nets to shark attacks, I finally found another island. I did the same trick of evading Jolene by eluding the seabed at safe distance from the raft. But she wasn't the only water creature that wanted me dead, as I found the puffer fish again, or well, it found me. My skills of swimming backwards were unmatched and I felt very smug about it. I continued to gather clay and conjure bricks, but the pufferfish seemed to have a particular dislike for potters and surprised me with a noxious spell. I escaped her toxic spa treatment by the skin of my teeth and refused to book another appointment. I then noticed all familiar landscapes and it all fell into place. I had drifted right back to the same godforsaken island that was hell-bent on getting me killed. I returned to my raft to assess the situation. Thankfully, I had plenty of plastic this time. I pointed bricks to their places and dropped back down to the pufferfish depths to hopefully find some copper for my smelter. I quickly found another pufferfish instead and made a run for the land. After a few more minutes of unsuccessful scouring for ore, I felt the urge to step my foot on the island again and see how the island's been doing after my first visit. I visited the cave first and found a smoothie recipe, as if you need a recipe for that, and then I met the irate hog again. With the experience from the last encounter, I felt very smug about the fact that it was not able to hit me once on my ascent to the top of the island. I wasn't as good at evading the damned bird, however. The island looked exactly the same as last time, but the island gnome that runs the trash shop had replenished all the crates with new stuff, so I got my hinges while awaiting the angry bird's poop and I found another recipe for manganana, because it apparently comes in two parts. I had a close encounter with the bird and then slid down the mountainside back to my raft. Oh, I missed you. Throughout the next few days, I visited multiple islands in search of the elusive copper, by day 17 I had mastered diving. I was able to swim past the shark without being noticed, past the pufferfish without being blasted with gas, and I looted the reef so much that when I was done with them, they were begging me to speed up the climate change. 
I found silver algae, some underwater cave with crates that had wine goo and other loot, a turtle rocking a plastic free look, a sunken crate, a bunch of seaweed, metal ore, and, you guessed it, copper. I also finally crafted a smelter, which let me make iron ingots from iron, which let me make a stationary anchor, which let me stop at islands without having to craft a new anchor every time. I tested whether I could fall through the anchor hole, and uh, I could. I also made a metal spear because I was getting sick of Jolene. I collected barrels that swam through my raft, expanded it, and added collection nets to replace the ones I had lost, and was ready for some serious business. It was day 17 when I finally made my first circuit board and battery for my antenna and receiver, items that I had fished out of the ocean on my first day, and items that sounded very promising for finding out what was going on. I was happy for exactly one second when I realized that I needed three more circuit boards made from six copper ingots to actually build the things. While waiting for the smelter to produce more ingots, I once again took it upon myself to clean up the ocean. Oh no. Unfortunately, I was drifting at the worst possible angle for my collection nets to collect anything, so, just like in the olden days, I had to get my hook dirty. I had to juggle stuff in my inventory a lot, because all the blanks I was gathering and could have used for a storage box were going right into the smelter. Sometime later, I finally made the receiver, but I was still short of ingots to make an antenna, so I decided to let the smelter do its thing while I expand my raft and try not to die from thirst. On day 18, I finally had another circuit board made, which allowed me to create an antenna. Happy about my new acquisition, I celebrated in the most pirate fashion, throwing my hook into the sea. <gasps> I lost the decoration package, what if it had a motivational quote? You ungrateful brat, I'm cleaning up your home! I came up with the brilliant idea of refining leaves into ropes to conserve space. I um fished some more, and gathered some more floatsome, and then I noticed that my anchor was not in the middle of my raft. Wait, what? Confused, I tried to remedy the situation. You would think that a MacGyver would know how to count to six, and would realize that there was no middle tile on the raft, but that's not what was going on here. What was going on was that I could not comprehend how it's possible that I could not put it in the middle of two tiles. Who designed this thing? And of course I had to be holding a 10 ton anchor for Jolene to drop by and knock on my raft. I channeled all my anger into the spear and one punched Jolene. Oh damn, I actually killed her. I then scrambled to restore the anchor and drop it just so I can collect her head and bury her properly. I then got curious whether my anchor was reaching the seafloor. <laughs> it was not. So I buried the second shark's head next to her sister in my plastic container and ate the rest of her. Rest in peace, Jolene. You were a jaw-droppingly good friend. Anyhow, now that I had the antenna and receiver and was about to find people, I was not planning to roll into civilization on a dinky dinghy. Imagine the headline. Raft Hero saves the ocean from plastic. And a picture of some four wooden tiles and a sail. Haha, <laughs> no, nah, -uh. I was gonna build a proper yacht. It took me two days to gather all the necessary planks for walls, roofs, stairs, and pillars, but by the end of the day 20, I had it mostly done. Ta da! Well, it's a work in progress. But at least I could finally put down the receiver to hang in the air above me as I continued to gather resources. I found a quill in one of the barrels, which would have been useful if I found it at the very start to document my journey. Now that, as I hoped, I had nearly escaped the depths of this hell, I had no need for one. There was also a new shark on the block, one that I called Jonifer. I fortified some of my foundations to protect my new walls from her. I then went upstairs to finally tune in to the receiver. 
I already had the battery prepared, so I plugged it in. My journal then buzzed in my pocket, but had nothing new written inside. It's as if I had to use my newfound quill to write something down myself. Not today, journal, I have important things to do. I then placed down an antenna and learned that I actually needed three of them. Oh man, I don't have four more ingots! Faced with the gloom of my precarious situation, I sought solace in doing what I did best, rearranging things in my storage and fishing for scrap. I found the decoration package in one of the barrels, and once again, the gods of the sea blessed me with exactly what I needed, a motivational quote. With new determination, I paddled towards another island, where I found a seaweed forest that had metal ore, two giant clams, and thankfully, copper. Upon the return, I lifted the anchor, planted a lone watermelon seed just to get rid of it, learned that you can make a bird's nest out of a giant clam, and whaled the tar out of the shark before I learned that while I was there, gathering copper for the final part of my setup, my battery here was churning out electricity and had died a premature death. I kept popping it in and out, hoping against all odds that my makeshift defibrillator routine would magically bring some spark of life to that lifeless carcass. I couldn't hook it up to potatoes, so I had to gather more copper and make another battery. I was so dumb. It was day 22 and my life lost its meaning. Fishing felt like a chore, construction brought me no joy anymore. I was picking up trash from the sea just to make myself feel something. I kept coming back to the receiver if maybe it had come alive after all, but no. I didn't even have any strength to cast a line. So I was fishing from the middle of my raft, and weirdly enough, it was working. I spent hours mindlessly wandering about my raft, until I drifted to another island. I was awoken from my apathy by a rock that fell from the sky. Damn you, poor bird! Thankfully, I had a roof over my head, so I could hide under it. I made another chest to store my stuff in preparation for another dive, stubbed my toe on my own creation. Ow! ate some fish, and finally dropped down in another attempt to gather some copper. I did find some copper and some pain to go with it, but it wasn't enough, so I paddled to the other side of the island for another attempt. I found a pufferfish there that was guarding a chest. As I had said before, I was now a master pufferfish evader, so I got the chest and bailed. It contained a shark dinner recipe, which I could only assume had me as the only ingredient. I left the island on day 23 with a total haul of 4 copper. After all the smelting, I would have 7 ingots in total, which I hoped would finally be enough. And it was enough. On day 24, I finished all the smelting and finally crafted everything I needed. I made 2 antennas and 2 batteries. Wait, what? Why did I make 2 batteries? I also killed Jonifer because she was getting on my nerves. But truth be told, I couldn't shake the realization that this act, however necessary for survival, marked the end of a magnificent life. As I dissected her, I couldn't help but wonder if, in pursuit of serenity, I had disrupted the delicate balance of nature. I kept putting her head into a box and dropping it. It wasn't very respectful. <laughs> it's like I'm holding a plushie. I finally tuned back into my communication project and placed both remaining antennas and the battery. Expectedly, errors ensued, but they weren't too hard to fix. Yes! There were two dots on the screen. The blue one had a crosshair on it, so I figured that was the one I needed to go to. There were no directions on the radar, so I could only assume that it was showing the dots relative to its own position. I didn't know how to navigate since I was relying on drifting all this time, but the wind was blowing in the right direction now too. I placed some fortune cats for good luck and let myself drift. My fortune didn't last very long, as wind soon changed direction. I figured that the fortune cats were just freeloading and had to take matters into my own hands. As I was paddling to whatever place my receiver had picked up, I saw some dolphins, made the acquaintance with George, the cousin of Jolene and Josefina, and entertained myself by checking out my amazing paddling technique. Whoa. 
Oh, I think I see it. I was glad to have made all the more advanced stuff before making this journey, because if I had to make a new anchor every time my paddle broke or I had to eat, I wouldn't have made it. So now that I had made it, I wanted to thank my parents, my friends, and everyone who was rooting for me. I wouldn't have done this without you. Alright, let's go. It looks abandoned. Damn. Is it not the end? Not my escape from the depths of hell? I got you Bruce. Who's Bruce? I ran around collecting scrap. It was definitely not going to be the end of my raft life. Caught a shark, named him Bruce? <laughs> my names are so much better, you should step up your game. Robbie, boat's gone. Bruce is after me. Gonna stay here until I find a way off this place. Yeah, safe to assume they're all gone. After grabbing everything there was on the platform, I climbed the trash bin onto the second floor, where I found a headlight blueprint and a paper note made from some alien technology. It spoke to me in audio waves. Owl's radio notes. 22nd of December. Distress call received. Balboa Island. 9th of January. Koku won't accept facts. 2nd of February. Gunshots in the distance. Tangaroa City? 14th of February. Sparrows calm. That's a lean. 6th of March. Another distress call. Varuna Point. Missing child. 16th of April. Rafters dreaming of utopia. Foolish hope. Uh, February? We've picked up a lot of signals. Maybe someone will come and help us. We're not starving. Yet. The reactor at Celine might be the only chance we have against this endless ocean. You knew it, Sparrow. Owl thinks you betrayed us, but you must have had a good reason for leaving us here. I hope you make it to Celine. Wait, what? Who are you? you how how are you alive? For all of us. Damn, this is creepy. Where is everyone? Hey, a friendly face. Wondering how I ended up here? Long story. I don't have any appointments. Really, really long story. Anyway, nice raft. If you need any repairs done, let me know. I've sort of ended up as a maritime expert, mainly due to the world sinking. Awesome. Let's head out. Wait, where did she go? Wondering how I ended up here? Long story. Really, really long story. Anyway, so the world sank. There's not gonna be any saving for me then. At least now I know where else I should be looking for people though. I'm not holding out much hope. Huh? So I headed out. I punched in the code for the next location and hoisted the anchor. Ever since I left the platform, a shark was following me, and I couldn't tell if it was Bruce or George, the cousin of Jolene and Josefina. Either way, I accidentally killed them and had to collect their meat so it doesn't go to waste. I spent some time running after floating garbage like a complete idiot and dropping everything that I collect, like I usually do. But there does light up a light bulb above my head from time to time, because I then finally grasped that I didn't have to carry all those blueprints around with me, and researched a recycler that I needed in order to get some trash cubes from the shop. I placed an advanced purifier so I could make more water at once, and an advanced grill that would let me grill up to three foods. I then proceeded to eat raw shark meat because I'm a blundering idiot. I made myself an empty bottle to go along with my advanced purifier. It had 5 sips in it, which was great. This wasn't an ideal setup though, because I had to run back and forth with the water, something that I would not address for quite a while still. Another thing that I had to run back and forth for was the receiver, because I had to check whether I was still going to the next location, and to my surprise I was. 
wind was carrying me straight to it, so I could focus on improving my raft. This is how my raft looked at the end of the day, and this is what it was drifting towards. Imagine, my dear raft, one day it could be us. Just like all its family members and friends, Jonathan was a master of timing. He had me break my spear, which later turned out to be the precursor of my misfortunes. I made another chest to unload all the stuff I was carrying, but not the hammer of course, because I'd definitely be building things on that giant yacht over there. I was preparing half a day for this trip, but I ended up coming grossly unprepared. I should have, at the very least, crafted a headlight. Then I could see who the hell was operating this crowbar. What the hell is that a dog? That thing kicked the stuffing out of me. Now what would a sensible person do? Go back and make a spear, right? Well, I didn't have any planks for the spear. Remember that storage chest I made? Yeah, that was the last of it. And remember the wind that was in my favor before? Well, it was against me now. Thankfully, I at least had a paddle that I could use to get to the garbage stream. But it would be funny if the wind changed direction just as I had finished gathering planks. I was also starving and had to make a fishing rod. At this point, I was not sure if I was going to make it and seriously wondered if I would have to go back to drifting in the ocean before I could return to the ship. But I didn't give in to those depressive thoughts. You know what I did instead? I grabbed the net launcher to trap the weird dog creature. A freaking net launcher! So I was ready, but I chickened out and decided to find another entrance. Finally some loot, that's all I'm here for. There were some mechanical parts that I collected, but none of them appeared in my inventory. To no one's surprise, all the doors were locked on this part of the ship and I had to go back down into the innards. So I crafted myself a metal spear and went in. The ugly monster nearly killed me, but I lured it out of its cave and got it first. It only dropped one raw meat and no trophy. I was bummed at first, but then I figured I would not appreciate seeing that every day. I went in again, being careful with each step to make sure nothing jumped at me from the shadows. Nothing did, but it didn't stop me from laying bricks every step of the way. I saw a large rat last night. Unnervingly large. I tried telling the crew we obviously have an infestation among the lockdown supplies. They laughed at me. I kept finding items that unlocked parts of the ship for me. Red key, bolt cutter, blue key. The captain keeps complaining about my writ. If he does it again, he will be reprimanded. And the blue key unlocked a floor that broke the last bits of my confidence. It was so creepy, I refused to continue without a headlight. So I ran back to my raft to craft. I can't put into words the happiness I felt of finding out I had all the resources necessary, because let me tell you, what I said about there not being any more of those dogs? Nah. Well, that's not entirely true. The ship was teeming with these monsters, and I had to meet every single one of them as I was looking to uncover what was going on and where everyone went. These lurkers have potential. They were clearly once rats, now grown into something much more rabid, yet also smarter. I've already made progress on their training. With food and pain as incentives, I can discipline them. By sharing their blood, the tensions increase. I wonder if another species would react the same. I received a transmission from a place called Caravan not far from here. They have an active animal population. No longer do I need this makeshift crew. I will create true soldiers. Loyal soldiers. Safe to say this Ulof guy, he's not a good guy, right? I hoped I wouldn't have to face him and his army of rats. 
It's interesting that this ship is called Vassagaten, by the way, because Gaten translates to street from Swedish, and Vassa is the name of the Swedish ship that sank on its first voyage, and was later recovered and is now displayed in a museum in Stockholm. Olaf and all the crew members have Swedish accents too, so it's hard to imagine they wouldn't know what they're naming their ship after. Please let me know in the comments if you have any theories why the ship is called Ship Street. Rostrum, it's urgent! There's mist now! We don't know how far the water's risen! The maps are useless! We need to- The crew are planning a mutiny, Captain! It is time to act! Mutiny? They're just trying to stay alive! I- Are you mad? I gave you a chance to live! <coughs> now we have to protect ourselves <coughs> from the ashes. We will use the lurkers to our advantage. Alright, so it seems the ship ran aground because it was misty and everyone was too distracted with a um, mutiny to actually steer the ship out of the way. I had to know what happened next and I knew I'd find the answers on the captain's desk. The bridge was locked but the ship had everything one would need to create a bomb. If you didn't forget, I am the MacGyver of the seas. So I went to craft the bomb and I blew the door to the bridge open. Oh, that's an engine, hell yeah! Oh, and a steering wheel! <laughs> All of this was definitely worth it. I didn't find any more notes beyond the one that told me to go to Balboa, so I bailed. Unlike other vessels that I visited, this one unfortunately did not sink once I left. I spent ages in that ship and was happy to be out. I was expecting it to be a fun adventure to the rock star of all ships, my raft's future, and instead it was a horrendous horror nightmare. This was such a lighthearted adventure, how did it get so dark? Well, at least there were no human bodies. Well, probably rats ate everything. 12 meat, not too shabby, wonder if it's safe to eat. Yeah, and I changed my mind on sharks. They're alright. Miles better than those monsters for sure. The next thing I'll do is reinforce my raft with metal so they can't attack it anymore and I don't have to kill them, and then we'll be friends for real. And <laughs> that's what I thought at least. The problem with this was that I didn't have enough metal to reinforce the whole boat, so some sharks had to go. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Before all that happened, I was a happy little man for now I had a steering wheel and I could turn my raft however I wanted. And I wanted to turn it with the bow straight onto the upcoming stream of garbage to collect most of it. I was not planning on visiting any locations for the time being, as I wanted to focus on collecting all the raw materials, but the ocean didn't let me be, and I kept drifting to some islands. It was incredibly hard to move out of the way, especially when the island was as huge as this one. So I stopped and went exploring. I hadn't been on this island before, it looked like. I found a weird cave with lots of dirt and mushrooms, and an angry bird screeching above my head and gathering poop to fling at me. I don't know why I was collecting dirt so meticulously, but it was shiny so I couldn't pass. I then got out of the cave and saw lights. It was the shop again, drawing me closer with its inviting glow. But there was a hog blocking the path. Why do they always build these shops in dangerous areas? I ran across the slope like a master tracer, unloaded my things and wanted to make myself a recycler to finally make use of the shop, but I didn't have enough metal ingots, so down to the puffer fish depths I went. I made myself flippers so I could swim faster and dive deeper. I got me some copper and metal ore and then I met a puffer fish again. I really wanted to see if I could kill her and I thought I did, but she didn't drop any loot so I was confused. Was it me or did she off herself? I picked the crate she was guarding and returned to the raft with my hole. John was not happy about my presence, so I promptly went to show him who's the man of the house. I then proceeded to eat raw tilapia while staring at my grill rack, because I don't learn from my mistakes. I then smelted all my iron and made the recycler, which I placed at the very best location for easy access. 
It turned out that it needed a boatload of resources to be filled, so I had to unload most of everything I had collected during the trip from Wasagaten. It seemed like a pattern at this point. I had to place a battery to start it up, which I wasn't very happy about. While waiting, I reorganized my storage, and look how beautiful it is! And did some other maintenance activities, and after about 10 minutes, the recycler was done. I picked up 4 trash cubes, removed the battery so it doesn't run out like my very first one did, and went back to the island to poke the warthog in the nuts. This was my first win against Warhawk, and I was pumped. I then proceeded to trade my hard-earned trash cube for fish bait, which I didn't find to be a fair trade in the slightest. I returned to my raft to eat and craft our fishing rod, which I then used with my new bait. Damn, these fish look awesome, I wish I could eat them. I couldn't, so I went back to the shop to trade them in. I realized I would need 26 fish to get to the next reputation tier, but I could only buy 12 bait with my trash cubes. This exchange rate sucks and we need a union. I settled at the most scenic spot. Beautiful. When the day came, I turned to enjoy the view of my half-finished raft and proceeded to fish in the most shallow part of the rock. I then traded my catch and returned to my raft. As my collector nets were busy gathering materials for me to use in the recycler, and hopefully some barrels with rum, I got back to building the raft. I got so engrossed in it that I missed my raft's audition for a role in Titanic. So I went to see what I could find on the rocky iceberg. I found a treasure chest and some beach towels, but it didn't cross my mind to dig deeper. I found some stones too that belonged to the sea. A while later I was again on my raft, renovating, and what do you think? My raft seemed to be set on getting that damn roll. So I loaded the... So I loaded the... Re so I loaded the recycler, checked up on Giovanni, and went up the island. Its treasures were getting guarded by a boar, so I retreated and went the other way. Damn it. A short while later I killed the boar and collected my trophies. I then found a goat and was curious if I could kill it too. But I got thirsty, and when I turned around, the goat was gone? Well, that's new. I looted the island to my heart's content, and the items that I couldn't bring with me, I sacrificed to the gods of the sea. Curiously, my sacrifice worked better than Fortune Cats did, so I might have to start a new religion. I was given freedom by the gods of the sea to keep drifting, and so I spent that freedom on figuring out how I wanted my raft to look. I built this wall on my second floor, but I wasn't happy about it, so I tore it down. I replaced it with a shorter wall. I put a window on it, but I didn't like it, so I promised to myself I'd demolish it soon. I removed the front window on the first floor for a door and placed down two fortified collection nets. That's all I did in the span of three days, because while the gods of the sea did give me time, they did not give me a sliver of decisiveness. So on day 43, I drifted to an island again, and this one had a shop that I was finally prepared to use. With trash cubes in my pockets, I ran to it, and was utterly confused that there was nobody around to attack me. I bought myself 16 fishing baits, crafted a fishing rod, and then stood for 5 minutes like an idiot, analyzing my raft and figuring if I liked it or not. I returned to my raft because I had to eat, but all I had was some salmon and catfish that from my past experience did not fit on the grill. So I made myself a cooking pot, decorated it with some recipes and went to cook salmon. Oh. Oh. 
Yeah, I could tell the pooping bird was laughing in its nest, so I lifted the anchor and bailed. I realized how dumb it was that I had my steering wheel on the side, so I made some renovations, removed the freeloaders, and kept company with my friend's steering wheel as it enjoyed its first sunrise. This inspired me to continue renovations, and I made quite the progress. I built a platform that I was eventually going to expand and make a third floor, and would finally have a proper wheelhouse on the second. But before I could finish all that, I drifted to a trash shop island and went to do a business. I did forget to fish prior to this, so I snuggled up on the staircase and fished in the warmth of LED lights. At first, I thought it wasn't working because all I got was an old shoe. But then it occurred to me that I hadn't applied the fishing bait. And then it worked without a snag. Until my fishing rod broke and I didn't have any ropes to make a new one. I was forced to leave the island. And as is typical of me, I didn't sell my newly caught marine pals and lock them in my bag instead. I returned, made a fishing rod, saw a stingray as I fished. Can I get him? And decided to finally read the recipes I had gathered. Shark dinner seemed to be the only one I actually had ingredients for, so that's what I made. Well, I placed the ingredients because I didn't know how to actually cook. At first, I thought it needed water. But it already had water somehow. Then I thought it needed a spear. A mushroom? Paddle. Roof tile. Trash cube. Axe. Finally, I gave it some planks and it worked. I began salivating at the sight of the food being made. I needed a bowl for the food, so I made some clay bowls and went to get my shark dinner. I packed it in a nice cardboard box and threw on the floor. Um, the shark meat looked exactly like the one from the grill. Yeah, and the clay bowls were single use apparently? At the dawn of a new day, I removed the cooking pot and put the finger in a trench coat on its place. I then made further renovations, trying to get rid of the antennas in my way. But the receiver got all fussy about it and demanded they were all on the same floor. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? I spent half a day moving the antennas around, but didn't get anything close to resembling a working solution. So I decided to move all the production and cooking items down to the ground floor, cooked some more, made a storage dedicated to cooking items and another storage for future proofing, loaded the recycler, moved my things around, and that was it for the day. If I actually slept, there's no way I would ever have had any time to do anything. On day 50, I moved my anchor because it was impeding my movement, expanded my raft, stared into distance as I opened all my decoration packages, put up a calendar and a motivational quote, um, good things come to those who float. I don't know about that, I'm still waiting for the pizza delivery guy. I then ceremonially put up Josephina's or Jolene's, John's, who knew at this point, head on the wall. Say hi to your twin sister. I made a cupboard for all my dead batteries, placed the useless cat on top, put down a cactus for a finishing touch on the top floor and string lights for some atmosphere on the bottom floor put down a paint mill to make paints, and that was it. I had survived 50 days on this raft, and with string lights and motivational quotes, I was primed to survive 50 more. In the next episode, I will be building engines, visiting the Balboa Island with its furry inhabitants, uncovering the truth behind these skyscrapers, and much much more. Subscribe if you don't want to miss it, and comment with the timestamp of your favorite part. You have to do this, because the local shop only accepts comments as currency, and I really want to eat. Help.